Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome to another plugin knowledge session. In this one, we're going to continue with our isotope neutron uh, sessions, and we are looking at the last component that I have. So this wraps it all up. And this again is another advanced feature, sort of another separate bolt-on component here, and it's called the visual mixer. So the visual mixer is supposed to be as it's indicating a visual way of mixing. Now it relies on you having neutron loaded on each of your tracks and you put your visual mixer on the last mix bus there and you then can move the tracks around on a visual screen to pan them where you want them, bring them forward in the mix, which raises the volume or bring them back in the mix, which reduces the volume. You can adjust the stereo width of the components as well. And again, as I said, it's supposed to give you a visual representation as if you were sitting in front of the band and you're looking and listening to them where you would place them in the mix, uh, how far forward, back, to the sides, in the center you want them and how spread out you want them to be. The one major downside to this is that all of the changes have been made in Neutron itself, so they're not reflected on your DAW's faders or pan settings or anything like that. They are only in the plugins, and each of your tracks needs to be set to a stereo track for it to be able to do pan or stereo width. If you only want it to do volume, then they can be mono, but you can't even pan them left and right doing that. They will be stuck in the middle and then you'd have to go over to your DAW's pan to move them to the left and right if you wanted to. So, so that's what it basically does. And let's go and see how it does it and see what we think. All right, so Visual Mixer here is supposed to be a new sort of way of actually mixing your songs in the point of placing your tracks. Now, if you've struggled with where do I put instrumentation, you know, how do I get things to sit back in the mix, how do I get them to sit to the sides or uh, narrow their stereo field or expand them, then this tool is supposed to help you with that. Now, the first thing is, is that you need to have Neutron on all of the tracks, okay? So in the case here, we're not going to, naming convention on this song obviously is not right because this is just a, a a session that I use to test plugins. It's not actually a song. But if we were to uh, have each one of these, and let's just see which one. So we've got this bass here has got Neutron on it. We've got this drums. It has Neutron on it. And let's just pick something else. So let's say this guitar track. Let's change that out to Neutron. Okay, so when we're in this view here, we've got all of our tracks that have Neutron on it, and we can double click and give them a name if we wanted to, to make it more uh, understandable. So for instance here, this 101 here, we can call Bass. And then I don't know which one the other two are. So in theory, we should be able to move these around and it will change the volume. So by looking at it visually, in this case here, this is our order of listening. So let's say we're sitting here and we're listening, or we're sitting at the zero mark here. All right, so this is to give us a visual representation of we're sitting over here somewhere and these tracks here by default were all sitting on top of each other. Now, based on this, if we want to have the bass louder than the rest of the components, we have it forward. But we can sync that back if we think, no, that's not right. Okay, so that's definitely drums. 
So let's name that. And let's name that one Guitars. So you can use this to sort of visualize where things should be and adjust the volume of where they should be. But you'll see here that we're pretty much locked on where things would be because they're all mono tracks. The only one that we can move is this mix bus here because it's stereo. But again, it doesn't seem to do anything with that. So I suspect that we need to have actual stereo tracks for this to function. And let's prove a point by actually adding some stereo tracks and let's call it bass. And I'm going to move my audio down onto the stereo track. And I'm going to remove Neutron from there. And I'm going to place Neutron on the new stereo track. And I just want to prove a point here because so far it's really not doing anything at all. So we've got our bass. Not hearing it because we haven't got it soloed. So volume definitely works. Okay, there we go. So that means that we could visually create our stereo field here. So let's go with some guitars. Let's add a stereo track. So I'm just going to move that down there. And we're going to move the audio file up. Bring that in. And again, we'll load Neutron on it. And then we also want one for our drums. And again, solo and load Neutron. Obviously you would have this done all in preparation. Not really, I'm not really happy about the fact that all the tracks have to be actually stereo, even though they're mono instruments, but obviously that's the only way this is going to work. So we have some extras there that we need to get rid of, Neutron off. So let's just remove Neutron off the old track so we don't have that getting in the way. All right, so we're back to square one, okay? So we're just gonna ignore our full mix bus because that, and I think the reason that didn't work before was because it is actually bypassed. So if I remove it, we will not see that anymore. Okay, so we got our visual mixer sitting on the mix bus. We have our three instruments, bass, drums, and guitar. And I'm gonna load one more because I wanna be able to sort of place these as if I was doing a mix. So now, we listen to it, it would sound very horrible. Let's go back to the start. Dance, dance, dance. Dance. Okay, that's not very good. Right, so we've got our drums, they're in the center. We've got our bass in the center, that's fine. Let's get our guitars and let's go and move our guitars out to the side. Let's just start with everything sitting at sort of zero dB. Guitars out to the side. You could go as wide or wherever you want there. And let's take our keys out to the other side. And we got our vocals in the middle. Dance, dance, dance. Gonna make you dance, dance, dance. 
Okay, so let's just bring some things down very low so we can hear what we're doing. So you can definitely hear as I'm moving. But what you're also supposed to be able to do is actually increase or decrease the stereo f spread. That's actually what a guitar sounded like in mono as it's a mono guitar. We can actually stereo widen that guitar and then lean it towards one side all the way. Mixture of the two or a bit of both. So let's bring that back to mono because it's mono. I want it over here. Let's bring our keys up. Thing. It's mono keys. Now I'm a bass. Now you can balance the levels as well. Let's just bring them all down. So you might want your bass a bit louder. Let's bring our drums in. And if you imagine this as like a stage or as somebody's the band sitting in front of you, that could be a visual representation of it. And you might say that the drums should be a little bit back in the mix. And in the end, you know, your bass could be pretty much where the drums are as well. And then you say you want your vocals in front. Now, obviously, this representation may not work depending on how loud the tracks are to start with. They would need to be all the same basic level for this representation to work because I could bring this up and the vocal track could be so loud that it's ridiculous. And to actually get it to the right level, I might have it down here, but it still appears in front or sounds to appear in front. And then you're supposed to be able to actually create snapshots. So we could have a, a mix snapshot there, which I've just stored as A. And now let's say we make some adjustments. So now I'm going to go really wide with these guitars and the keys and a bit sort of to the side. And I'm going to bring the vocals. So that's the bass. I'm going to drop the bass back a bit. And I'm going to set that as B. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the, the drums forward closer to the vocals. And let's say we create a narrow mix this time. So I'm going to come in here like this and I'm going to set that as C. So now as we play, we should be able to switch between the mix snapshots and quickly listen to the comparisons. So you could see 
it could be slightly useful. I think it's a little bit of a gimmick personally myself, but you know, if you want to actually sort of use this to play with just to get an idea of where you want things to sit, then that's fine. But what you need to be aware of is that I have no idea what it's actually changing when it's doing that. So let's have a look and see. Okay, so what it's actually doing by looking at this is changing some parameters in Neutron. So if we find the vocal track, you'll see as I move it forward, it's basically boosting this output here. If I move it left and right, it is moving that, and that is adjusting our stereo width. So it's basically, again, another remote control for these functions here, and that's exactly why I needed to have this on a stereo track, because this plugin needs to be able to function in stereo for these two settings to work, and that's why I can't do it. But the thing is, is that if you then brought up your mixer, none of that would be represented on these faders or on these pan controls here because it is only within Neutron that this is happening. So you need to keep that in mind. You need to be aware of that. And like I said, it could be something fun to have a bit of a play with, but I think it's a, to me, it's a little bit gimmicky. I would rather just do everything in the Cubase DAW myself, but have a play with it. You might prefer to do things like this. This is supposed to obviously be a visual representation, which Cubase doesn't have that, but yeah, check it out and see what you think about it. So there you go. That's Isotope's visual mixer. Interesting little tool there. Can be sort of handy if you struggle to work out placements and how things sit in the mix and you need to visually see it. I personally think it's a little bit of a gimmick and the way that it does things and the way that everything's in the plugins and the way that you've got to have your tracks all set to stereo to me is just a bit of a limitation that I'm not quite, quite happy with there. So I think it's fun to play with but I would probably probably never use it in a mix to be honest with you uh, it's just not something that I would do I, I'm much happier to use the DAW controls and I guess that I can visualize it in my head but if you struggle to visualize things in your head like that and you need to see it on the screen then this is a good way of doing it or if you just want to get an idea before you go and do it in your DAW, that might be a good way to do it because you can save obviously those snapshots and switch between them quickly to get an idea of the placement. And then maybe you could go then and apply them to the DAW settings and turn the Neutron settings off. So that could be a good idea to do it that way. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. See what you, you know if you think it's a gimmick or something useful or do you use it at all? Let me know. I'm interested to hear. And hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.